Have you ever wondered what it takes to create a truly beautiful and magical space? I'm talking about architecture that looks like it was pulled from the high realms of imagination, from a sci-fi movie or an epic fantasy tale. Would you be curious about its design? Hello everyone, my name is Simon and on this channel I am taking a holistic view of the whole world of design, from its theory to its lifestyle. If at any point you find my content interesting, please make sure to click the like button as it helps with promoting this video to others as well as subscribing to the channel so I can keep making more content like this. The Free Spirit Spheres are a handcrafted rentable architecture suspended in the forest that looks like it belongs in a fantasy movie. These spheres are located in Qualcomm Beach, Vancouver, Canada and are designed and constructed by Tom Chutley, a prior power engineer, biologist with extensive boat building experience. This all started when Tom was looking to create a new type of spherical houseboat for himself. Feeling confident on his ship building experience, he first set out to create a prototype of this spherical house boat. As he was building this nine foot in diameter sphere prototype, he had to suspend it so he could work on it. At which point, an accident happened and all but one of the support cables gave out. This resulted in the unfinished but already spherically sound structure to bounce around all over his workshop. At that point, Tom appreciated the structural relationship between the cable and the sphere and how the sphere's geometry easily dissipated forces as it was colliding with everything around the workshop. At that moment, his goals changed from trying to build a buoyant spherical houseboat to creating a suspended spherical treehouse. Between making and designing, Tom started to reconceptualize what the free spirits spheres were going to be. Tom now wanted these spheres to hang in the canopy of the forest instead of floating in the sea and started seeing the spherical geometry as nature's packaging, a seed or a nut where the exterior structure protects the interior content as it hangs. He started to adopt a mindset of biomimicry. The geometry of this architecture is very pure, a single perfect sphere. In Eve's case, the first sphere made, we have a nine foot diameter sphere. The geometry of these spheres is special and challenging in many ways for architecture. Building a sphere is way more complicated than building a box. The tools and logistics you use to measure and construct a sphere are totally different from your standard orthogonal construction. For example, the exterior shell of the sphere is made of curved, thin fragments of wood layers glued together and placed on top of the sphere's main frame one at a time. The spheres have one entrance and five circular windows on their surface. Two of these windows measure around four feet in diameter and are operable with a bro at the top to avoid water coming in when you open it. Three small non-operable windows measure around one foot in diameter. One of them is on the door, the second one is directly across from the door, and the third one is located close to the apex of the sphere serving as a skylight. From an architectural perspective, windows provide a visual connection between the inside space and the outside world. In this case, these windows articulate not just a visual connection to the forest by providing a horizontal connection to the forest canopy during the day and a vertical connection to the stars through the skylight during the night, but they also permit an olfactory connection to the forest as you can somewhat open the big windows and let in the smells and temperature of the forest into the sphere. I find very elegant that the spherical geometry not only makes the architecture lighter as the skin of the sphere doubles as the structure of the sphere, but from an architectural standpoint, the floor, walls, and ceilings are a continuous element of the space. This is very different from our standard box construction, where we have distinct elements for each one of these that we can articulate with different textures and colors if we wanted to. The geometrical experience of being inside a sphere is also very distinct from our modern and standard com cubic configuration. Also consider the acoustics of a sphere and how it further differentiates the space from our everyday architectural experience. There is also the symbolic layer of the sphere, which we perceive as being connected to nature. We 
also associate concepts like infinity and unity to this geometry, which overall elevates the experience of being in the sphere from a psychological and cultural perspective. Eve is made out of yellow cedar. Erin, the second sphere made, is a 10 and a half foot in diameter and is made of Sitka spruce. The change from 9 foot to 10 and a half might not sound like a lot, but it's actually a 60% increase in volume. Melody and Luna, the third and fourth spheres made, are also 10 and a half feet in diameter, but instead of wood, they are made of fiberglass. Melody has a yellow exterior color, which tries to emulate the wood color of the previous designs and has a graphic of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony's motif with some birds chirping on it to differentiate it from the other spheres and also complement its name. Luna seems to completely embrace the fiberglass materiality and has a dark color. The window configuration between all these spheres is similar, for the exception of the brow at the top of the operable window only existing on Eve. The shift of construction from wood to fiberglass comes out of Tom looking away to ease his construction process. It takes a whole year of work to do one wooden sphere. While it only takes a few weeks, if maybe one, to do the fiberglass counterpart. I do feel like this change from wood to fiberglass really takes away from the fundamental tenet of biomimicry. The fiberglass just doesn't seem to fit as well in the natural landscape as the wood does. It breaks that materiality connection with the forest and it goes from something feeling natural and articulated to something modern and industrious, losing a bit of its original enchantment. These spheres are suspended high up in the forest canopy by a network of cables anchored to the trees, almost looking like they are caught in a spider web. Each sphere has three eyeballs on the top half of the sphere from which suspension cables are attached to. When installing the sphere, after selecting the grove of trees where the sphere is going to live in and finding a somewhat triangular configuration of the trees, a person goes up one of those trees and installs a steel bracket. These brackets do not penetrate the tree at all, have padding to safeguard the tree, and are refitted every year to accommodate the tree's growth. Each bracket serves as a pulley system, with the end of the cables anchored to the forest floor. Once all three brackets have been installed, they are used to raise the sphere to the desired elevation. Then another set of eye bolts, this time located at the bottom half of the sphere, are used to horizontally anchor the sphere to the tree, and this way mitigate the sway of the sphere when it is suspended. A steel and wooden spiral stair with rope guardrails wraps itself around the main tree with brackets and cables. Once you get to the top of the stair, a short suspension bridge makes up the gap between the stair and the sphere. This structural system is helpful in safeguarding the trees it depends on for its structural stability and keeping the footprint of the architecture at a minimal, to the point that when you take down a sphere, it is as if it was never in the forest in the first place. It also permits the spheres to be taken down and placed in a workshop, a safer environment to work on, whenever maintenance is needed to be done to them. This suspension system also permits the sphere to experience some bouncing when you're in it, which adds to the organic feel of this architecture emulating the tree's margin of sway in the wind. The only structural differences between these spheres exist in Luna, the latest model. Instead of hanging from the trees, Luna has been given an independent wooden stand that can be taken apart like a kit. Even though this structural kit is made out of wood and it blends into the forest tapestry, I feel like this is just another change made where ease of construction of this architecture has taken a fundamental element out of this design. The direct structural dependence on the trees of the forest is gone. Another magical element of this architecture has been eliminated for an emulation of it. As you approach the sphere, you immediately notice the submarine-like door, a door that molds perfectly to the sphere. As you take a closer look, you start appreciating what is undoubtedly a handcrafted engineered element. The door has a four-point ball system to securely lock the door in place by rotating the handle that engages all four bolts at the same time. The door itself is attached to two giant J-shaped hinges that permits the door to operate properly in a sphere, 
meaning it is first able to pop out to acquire the clearance to then move to the side. Once inside of EVE, the first thing that you notice after understanding where exactly the floor is on the sphere is the internal spherical geometry, the dome that is above you which is not something common in modern architectural design. After taking in the geometry of the space, your eyes are attracted to the big windows from which you can see the forest. Then you start noticing the furniture. For Eve, we have a small single bed, a small table with two benches, a counter with drawers, cabinetry to each side of the door, and finally, one high open shelf all around the sphere. The overall interior materiality and relentless maximizing of the limited spaces is reminiscent of the interior of a boat or a tiny home, which makes sense since shipbuilding is Tom's main source of construction knowledge. Of course, due to the geometry and the scale of the sphere, it is very challenging to include everything needed in our modern residential spaces. This limiting factor forces this space to be more of a, an experimental, limited, transitional residence, maybe for a personal retreat or creative alone time instead of being more of a long-term residence. Each of these spheres is substantially different in the inside from each other, each one being used by Tom as a chance to experiment with different internal configurations. For Aaron, you have two beds, a small double bed to the side of the sphere and another small single bed elevated perpendicularly. Below the elevated bed is a kitchenette. You have a table with two small benches, a top open shelf, and a lot of creatively placed storage all around. Here, the biggest change from Eve is that Tom added a slightly bigger main bed and an additional elevated single bed, sleeping up to a total of three people in the sphere, while also providing kitchen-like functionalities for the first time. Granted, all this was facilitated by the increment in volume that Aaron had from Eve. Melody has a more developed home feel to its interior. It has a Murphy bed where tables, mirrors, and a bigger double bed alongside storage spaces are all held together and modulated from one specific area of the sphere, leaving more space to be repurposed during the day when the bed is not in use. This not only permitted a bigger and more comfortable bed to be included in the design, but also created more seating areas next to the big windows. Here, we see Tom leaning into modular furniture design to explore how to maximize this spherical space and transform it from day to night. The Luna model is similar to Melody with some key alterations. Instead of having a Murphy bed, Luna raises the double bed above head height during the day and brings it down during the night. This opens up the layout of the sphere to be more open and articulated since the bed component, the biggest item of furniture, is taken completely out of the layout during the day. This permitted Tom to add one more bench under the bed to create more seating area and a more spacious interior. Tom not only constructed the sphere, he also custom made everything within the spheres. All the cabinetry, furniture, door, windows, and even hardware are made in his workshop. He bronze cast the door handles and window hinges out of the necessity due to all pre-manufactured standard components being made for square geometry construction and not spheres. But he took this as an opportunity to create and fully customize these hardware components to the point that he added runes to them and in the process gave them a somewhat of an unintended steampunk feel. Throughout all these models, you can truly see Tom's craftsmanship, but also his thought process working through the articulation and efficient maximizing of this very challenging space to inhabit. This integration of design and construction, where one person has control over the whole realization process of the design, is something akin to pre-industrial revolution times before the designer and the maker got separated into two different entities. And even though we certainly benefit from this process as a civilization, there is something magical that is lost in the design object itself that can only be created when the designer and the maker are one. And I do think that a lot of the magical feeling of this architecture comes from Tom being the designer and the maker of this space and being able to create unique, imperfect, but functional details for this particular space instead of it just being one more assembly iteration of what is in a catalog and has been predefined and manufactured by someone else, therefore limiting to a substantial degree, the designer's power 
to create something truly unique. Now, you might be wondering, Simon, but where is the bathroom and how am I supposed to cook in these things? Be patient, my friend. I will answer all of your design questions in time. I'm actually very proud of that line. It fits really well in the channel. There are only three spheres hanged in the trees due to zoning laws. Each sphere is located in such a way that they are not far from each other, but they do not see each other. This is achieved by a combination of first being elevated in the canopy and having the tree branches function as a visual barrier. And secondly, the orientation of the spheres are in such a way that they avoid seeing each other and therefore creating the sense of forest isolation, which is a key component of this design. Just imagine if you had 10 or even two of these spheres next to each other. That layout would not create the sense of forest isolation, that privacy needed for that magical ambience to emerge. It would still feel forest you don't get me wrong, but it would feel more like a summer camp experience, a very cool summer camp experience, rather, but still, not a magical corner of the forest. There is another fourth sphere used as a main office and two types of peripheral buildings to provide the spaces and functionalities missing in the spheres. The first building is a private, mushroom-shaped compost toilet building, an outhouse, that is relatively close to each sphere. That way, if nature calls to you in an end of the gastronomical process sense in the middle of the night, you have somewhere nearby to relieve yourself with some decency. The shape of this outhouse was meant to be nature inspired and therefore its geometry is asymmetrical with wood shingles and siding to better blend into the forest. The second type of building is a communal building with a porch that holds a barbecue and seating areas around it. The interior of the building itself is divided into five main spaces. Three of them are full modern bathrooms, each one assigned to each sphere. The other two spaces are one, a full communal kitchen, and the other, a sauna. As anyone seeing the spherical hanging architecture can feel, Tom has done something truly unique and magical. The spherical geometry, the wooden materials, the custom construction, the sphere being elevated in the forest canopy, all of these elements put together create a unique and magical spatial experience, an architecture that creates a connection to the forest that feels magical. A true example of what could happen when the designer and the maker are one again. A true example of great design. I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into this design as much as I did. There are many, many more things I was not able to include in this video because I ran out of time. But I am very, very excited by what Tom has created here. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments on the section comment below. If you like the video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my videos and share this video with someone. These simple actions on your part help in a massive, massive way to build this channel up and be able to create more and better content. I'll see you in the next video.